So you okay, see you're live. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, you can, you know, the panelists can already see how many participants are joining, you know, when you hover with your mouse uh, over the screen. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, I always say these are the first, you know, awkward three minutes because you can't really introduce anyone because that's still, you know, we have to wait until everyone is on the call. But I think we already can say hi and, and thank you for joining. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're going to wait, you know, a couple of minutes until everybody um, uh, is, you know, is, is online. I think we're already over 100, um, which is great. We love that we have, you know, very loyal, a very loyal audience that uh, shows that we're doing something right. And, you know, for me also, one of the most fun parts is to, you know, always look at the backgrounds of my co-panelists. Um, really fun, you know, because everybody is in the interior design world and it's always pretty and you can always like steal a couple of ideas, you know, how to hang a mirror or... This is, or, this yeah, is, exactly. this is, this is your stripe. Oh. Oh yeah, cool. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It. Yeah, and we got the first, you know, highs. Um, Chantel, you know, yay, Jean's account brought me here. Uh, Emily Millman says, doing it all right. Thanks, Benny and Schumacher. Karen Eckerson, hello from New Jersey. I love these trainings. Sometimes we even have people, you know, joining in from Australia. I mean, they get up in the night to join, which I think is amazing. Um, and Whitney Rogers is from Michigan too. I, Whitney, I just said I learned the hand um, <laughs> uh, last week uh, from Andrew Fisher, from uh, Fisher Wiseman. And so I, I now know also what that means. Um, this is really cool. So th thank you for joining everyone. Um, and we give it another minute and then we start right through. Yeah, that's fun seeing the the comments. <laughs> yeah, right? From Nashville. Yeah. Uh, you know, Troy from Michigan, from, let's see whether, you know, if you're tuning in from some very exotic place, let us know. I always love to know. <laughs> uh, estimated duration is one hour. Um, and I'm going to repeat this in a second. We're also recording that. So in case you have to, you know, rush off earlier, uh, you can always find us on YouTube again. So somebody is um, joining from Washington, D.C. I think we can do more exotic, actually. <laughs> um, Lexington, Kentucky, Miami, really cool. Um, all right, so um, I suggest um, we get started. Um, I want to welcome everyone to today's uh, webinar. Um, today we are going to speak about uh, social rules and how you can leverage social media to help your business. Um, this is a serious, you know, for everyone who's joining the first time, this is a series um, that um, we are hosting um, every two weeks about uh, business success skills. And um, you can tune in and see any, you know, of the uh, panels that we did in the last weeks. Um, the easiest way is to go either through my Instagram, it's Benny underscore Frowine. There you see the link to all past registrations. I think you can even Google it or like enter, enter it on YouTube. Uh, if you do Schumacher webinar uh, or something like that, you're going to, you're going to find it. Um, and um, yeah, so I hope, or we hope you like it today and uh, you, you tune in again in two weeks. Um, with me today, I have three fabulous interior designers, powerhouses and creatives, and actually social media wizards. And um, I'm really excited to get um, answers to all the questions that I, you know, wrote down in, in, in advance. So, um, let me start, and um, Annie, if you could share your screen um, to also um, share some of the work. Perfect. So um, let's start with Amy. Amy is a young glo glo globetrotter, um, received her design degree at, at London Inchball Design of, uh, School of Design and settled down in Dallas to start her own interior design firm. Um, with projects all over the country, um, Amy is recognized for her very fresh and approachable take on traditional design. And I think you can see that very beautifully in the pictures. Um, and then I also wanted to mention that very recently, Amy opened her own um, brick and mortar. It's called Amy at Berry Home. And you can actually see the beautiful background of hers. I'm sure this is all for sale. Um, <laughs> selling furniture and home accessories. So um, 
uh, it's really nice to have you today, Amy. Um, oh, and, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much for joining. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Um, so then I wanted to introduce you all to Jean Stoffer, um, a Chicago native and recent Southwest Michigan transplant. Jean started her career with a focus on kitchen design before expanding to full scale home um, projects. Working with her daughter, um, I think she joined in 2016, Jean focuses on the unique mix of materials, textures, and color, combined with an understanding and expert application of interior detailing scale and proportion that has propelled the firm and its work into the national design conversation. And I also just love also this very simple but beautiful um, you know, interior. So Jean, thank you very much. and. I'm sure a lot of people are already following you on, on Instagram and who doesn't, please, you know, um, anyways, you should all follow the three ladies with me on the panel, but thank you for joining today. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and then last but not least, Yang Ha um, is also a Detroit native. Um, Yang started her career in law before pivoting to open her eponymous interior design firm in New York in 2007. I love that ceiling. Um, resetting the design narrative for each project, Young's work is about finding harmony and dynamism through the application of classic and modern design principles. And I think, again, you can see that very nicely in all of these examples. Um, Young, thank you very much for joining, taking the time today. I'm really thrilled to have you on the panel too. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, and before we get started, um, I just have a couple of logistics, um, you know, to explain to everyone. So um, we have prepared um, some questions. I think, you know, for the first half an hour, um, you know, I think, um, I mean, I came up with a couple of questions that I think will interest everybody. Um, and then you also have for the last 20 minutes, you know, the opportunity to we just do a Q&A. Uh, in order to submit your question, um, you can hover with your mouse over the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, and um, then you type in the question. Do me the favor, try to keep it short, because I normally have to read, you know, read, speak, uh, think about the next one already, so it just makes it much easier for me to, to navigate through this. Um, yeah, shall we get started? Um, I would love to understand from you first, and Jean, maybe we start just with you because you're the first one to, to, to my picture. Um, when did you start social media and what do you focus on when you post? What's the strategy? Well, I started social media in earnest in 2017. And that's when my son, John, who's a professional photographer, suggested that this would be a good time because Instagram in the beginning was just really a place for photographers to share their work. But it really started migrating into interiors in 2016, 2017, and that's when I got busy. And um, he suggested that I keep it professional. So I have, I use my post, my main feed to post only interiors that we do. All of the photography you see is work that we that is our work um and so that's been our consistent thing throughout is posting well photographed work whether it's professionally or with my own iphone and doing interiors that we have done the work for uh i must i must say i'm really impressed you know um i i didn't know when you started in 2017 isn't so long ago and you have so many followers um, i'm really impressed and I think, you know, we, we have a lot of qu more questions to understand how you got there. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, uh, Young, what, what, when did you start and what do you really focus on? What do you try to like bring across? Um, I started Instagram in around 2014 when I did my first Kip Space show house. Um, and back then it was really kind of just fun and social. I would take pictures of my kids, funny snapshots of friends. It was very much like just sort of your friend group. And when I did Kip's Bay, it was the first time that 
people I didn't know started following me, started reposting, um, because the show house was open to the public. And it was really at that moment that I understood the power of Instagram, that it was really reaching the public and that other people were um, taking pictures of my room and tagging me. And um, that's really where I thought um, this could really have a business application. And did you, um, did you pivot from, from that moment to really purely uh, interiors or do you still also mix in, you know, some of your personal life? So I definitely mix in some of my personal life because I was so used to it being, you know, a personal tool. So I've never really veered away from that. Um, you know, I still like doing the Father's Day post and, you know, certain things. Um, but my children did um, start to complain about me posting about them. So now, you know, I got to get pre-clearance. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think um, I still, um, I think it wouldn't be fun for me if it was only professional. Um so I do a mix of both. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Amy, how, when did you start and um, how do your kids, um, uh, you know, react, <laughs> react to you? <laughs> um, I started Instagram, I was thinking about this. From, I honestly think I started Instagram in 2012, I think. And it was when I was in design school. I remember a friend of mine who was like, always knew the next thing. She was like, you need to do Instagram. I was like, okay. And I was in design school and I was just like traveling and taking pictures of just stuff I saw. And it was, I mean, for me, I was kind of just doing it more for me, I think when I started it, like I just enjoyed taking pictures at like the, when I'd go shop for flowers kind of thing, like it wasn't really intentional. Um, and I started doing, I did a little design program in London. Um, I don't just kind of, my Instagram's kind of just my life. So it's everything. Um, it's kids and you know, my dogs and what was my dogs first and then the kids um but I don't know for me it was just kind of a thing that I I started doing it when I started doing design school um yeah and so it's just mine's everything yeah it's interesting I mean um and I think that brings us to the next question because I think you know all of you have a slightly different angle on I mean obviously all about interior design but you know some more personal some more professional and so on so Jean, maybe I can start with you again. Um, you know, what do you use your account for? Um, because I think, you know, we always talk about like Instagram and Instagram and, but I think it's really important to like discuss, you know, what do you actually, why do you actually spend that time on that and not on something else? So what are you using it for and what do you want to get out of it? Yes, well, I do use it professionally to, um, to show our, brand and our style to potential clients and potential brands that I might be interested in. And I, um, I do feel that it's such an interesting medium because you can be so personal with it while showing an interior, talking about things in a very personal way. And I think the other thing about Instagram that's so great is the story feature and um, that's where I go to do much more personal things, talk about family, talk uh, like go to job sites, talk about um, design ideas and different things I'm thinking, places I'm going. Um, so I really differentiate the story side from the feed side, make the story side much more personal, playful, but I really do use it as the only marketing tool for our business. And well, I guess along with our website too, but um, it has been extremely effective because I've been able to have a real connection with people and they, people feel like they can get to know me as a person, as a designer, um, like how I might approach things. And so, what my family is like, how I operate. And so when they inquire about working with us, they, most people say, I feel like I already know you. Is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> and I just say, no, it's great because you know what you're getting. 
And you just said, I, you know, if I may just quickly ask one more question to you, you know, you just said you can make your, your post so personal by showing an interior design picture. Mm -hmm. Is that about the picture? Is that about the caption? And what do you mean by personal? Can you give us an example so that if I want to do something super personal, you know, this afternoon when I post that I get an idea about like what to do? Yes, I would say it's more um, how I personally relate to the interior that I'm showing. Something that I got so excited about when um, it came to life or something like that, some, something that I love about it, but just um, as opposed to just saying, this is, um, you know, this wallpaper, this, this, that color, the, it's more like, and I love the way the light comes through the windows and blah, blah, you know, like that. Super helpful. Thank you. Um, Amy, what do you use your Instagram account for? You know, because you also said like, you know, you started and, and young, you said the same thing, right? You started with friends and so on. And, and now it's like you and your life and you, do you use this to just share who you are or does that have actually a real business purpose for you? What do you want to get out of it? Well, it doesn't really have a, for me, it doesn't have a business purpose. For me, it's just, I think I'm kind of unfiltered. And so it's like what you see is kind of what you get. And I mean, it, when I've had a couple of people, they don't really ask me anymore because I think everyone, the answer is pretty obvious. Like, do you have someone else to do it? It's like, well, no, because they'd be fired. It's, it's totally inconsistent. Yeah. I would, I mean, they would. It's like, I mean, I'll go through a streak where I post more and then I'll go through a week where I, it's like, is she still there? Um, Cause that's kind of what, you know, my life is. I, my kids are little and um, you know, it's just, I think that I, there's something I think about how cross category everything already is that yes, I mean, I, I love what I do and I am around what I do almost all the time or I'm thinking about something. And so it all kind of usually ties back to that um, but I, I feel like it's such a good platform to connect with people in ways that are more than just even what we do, you know, it's, yeah, I've, I've actually made a lot of, I like have a lot of friends that I, that have become my friends from Instagram, like become really good friends. Super interesting you know, because, you know, you're also so being so successful, um, I always thought that there was was a bigger also business sense behind that. Young, how is that with you? Do you really do that also like more as a hobby or is that has that more a business purpose for you? Um, I think I sort of approach it as if it were a hobby um, because I want it to be enjoyable for me. Um, I manage it myself. I don't have a strategy, sort of like Amy like I didn't post this week. <laughs> I posted it about, yeah, exactly. I posted it about today. Um, but on the other hand, I want to really say how profoundly Instagram has touched our business. It really um, has connected me to people. Um, it has brought us so many opportunities. We've had amazing clients from Instagram. Um, so, you know, I'm very cognizant of the fact that, you know, this is a, um, this has business impact and it is a very powerful tool. But at the same time, I think that Instagram, at least for me, um, I don't know if it would work as well and perhaps maybe, um, uh, I could use a tutorial from Jean. Um, but, um, you know, I sort of approach it the way I've always approached it, which is to have fun, to reach out to people, to express myself, to tell a story, to share my life, share my business, share my work, which I have a lot of passion for. Um, Young, you mentioned that, you know, you gained amazing projects out of that. I, I would love to, you know, piggyback on that or take that, you know, as you know, and ask you the next question in terms of like, to explain to us, you know, how Instagram has helped your business. Was this, you know, a one-off project, several projects, you know, did it connect you in a, in a different way to new, new business? You can give us like two, three examples. I would love to hear that. Yeah, I would say that in 2019 and 2020, most of our business came from Instagram. 
Um, there were inquiries, sometimes directly from Instagram. Usually they went to our site and then contacted us. But it was very clear that the way they found us was through Instagram. Um, and as Jean mentioned, they have this sort of um, understanding of our work, our approach. They follow all our press. Um, and, uh, you know, we've uh, had projects really across the country um, because of Instagram. Uh, we've also had um, brands approach us um, to collaborate. Um, uh, a lot of um, press opportunities also come to us because of Instagram. Um, they like our sort of the way we talk about things. So um, they'll ask us to do a story, um, ask us to do other things. Um, so specifically brands, um, client uh, inquiries, and actual clients. And um, yeah, I think for the first time in 2019, we switched from being mostly about referrals to just lots of cold calls, um, which were mostly based um, from Instagram. Wow. Um, Jean, yeah. have you experienced a similar shift? And you know, you started in 2007. I mean, you know, I, I saw that question in the chat, so I just like sneak this in here. Um, you know, how fast you grew, you know, you, you started your Instagram the la as the latest from all of us here. Uh, you know, I'm obviously the least successful with mine. Um, but, but, um, but how did you grow your followership so fast? And then, and then I would also love to ask you the question of like how it has benefited your business so far. Well, um, there is some, you, I mean, very specific things that happened um, at key times to grow the Instagram for me. And um, the benefit, you know, of, of having, uh, and I would suggest for people wanting to get into this and wanting Instagram to be a tool where they get good clients and um, people get to see their work is have your work photographed by a photographer that has a good Instagram following. Because this is what happened to me. My son does all my photography. He was an early adapter to Instagram and had a very significant following. And he posted a picture of my kitchen, which he photographed for me here in Michigan um, and on his feed. And it gathered a lot of attention from huge accounts who are aggregating accounts. You know, they're not necessarily doing all the content creation. They're looking for good stuff and they look at photographers' accounts because they're constantly posting great interiors. And a couple of very large accounts found me through John's Instagram and then went over and, and posted my work on their feeds. And that continues to happen. And those, I, I can always tell like, what's going on? And then I scroll and I, I see, oh, there's one of our projects and, you know, somebody big just posted it. And that's why all of a sudden you have this bump. It's so super, that's kind of how it happens. Super interesting. You know, I love also the idea of, you know, obviously working with a photographer that is doing a good job, but also someone who is well versed in Instagram that can give you an immediate boost. I love that. I love that um, tip. And, and that's happened over and over with John's, with people that John has photographed for interior designers. Interesting. Interesting. So, you know, um, wh whoever is, you know, uh, close to Jean and John, you know, you probably can uh, contact her through Instagram um, for photography. And um, Jean, tell us, you know, so now you have this spectacular number, I think 200,000 followers. Um, how does that help now your business? Because you don't just do it to like collect follower, followers, right? So no. how does that really has helped your business in the last years? Well, it definitely has brought us extremely high caliber clients that would have never been able to find us otherwise. And, um, you know, design minded, nice budgets, interesting homes. It's brought us a, a very high caliber client, which we're so thankful for. And it's also, um, like, like Young said, brought brands to us as well. 
who want to collaborate and are interested in sh having their product out there in a way that they know it's going to be presented beautifully. And so um, that's been a great thing for us as well. Interesting. Amy, how, how, how does, you know, how does it benefit to you? Also, you know, you just also opened your shop and so on. Do you see some overlap there? I would love to hear your opinion or perspective on that. Um, I, for me, honestly, I, I'm guilty of probably never really having a plan. Um, this was kind of, it was kind of, I mean, it was my dream job. It's like, I would love to do this. And so I kind of just started taking pictures of things that I thought were pretty and I, I just would make things look pretty. And at first it was like a little vignette because it was like, Amy, you can decorate that chest. I'm like, okay, let's make the chest great. Um, I think the store though is honestly like kind of a product of it for me. It's like, I, again, didn't have a plan with this really either, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I have two kids that are young and close together in age and I kind of wanted to change the way my business was and have a place where it's like these things that I kind of keep coming back to um, where people could kind of get them without getting me necessarily. So I could maybe be a little bit more of a mom um, but I think that Instagram for me was kind of a way to kind of find my voice a little bit with, um, with design and with what I was doing. And, you know, I think, I think that there's a way to kind of play with things. It's like, even if it's not something that's for a client to be able to use stories in a way that like, isn't, you're not taking yourself so seriously and just playing with things and it's not even for anybody. Um, you know, you just, you never really know, but at the store, I think honestly, has is still here after all of this because probably of instagram mm -hmm. it's yeah. a crazy thing yeah yeah i heard that a lot too that um you know yeah. that having an online present of any kind just really helped also through the time where people yeah. couldn't physically get somewhere yeah. i think april was sure. our busy we only opened a year ago so i think april was our our busiest month which is crazy we were closed the whole month but it was like let's just have fun with it or try so interesting. I mean, maybe quick question, you know, like um, that comes up in me right now. Like, do you feel you get a lot of requests right now through Instagram with people getting bored by, you know, because I'm sure, you know, I, I'm, I'm hearing, so I'm, I'm telling you why I'm asking. I'm starting to hear tier designers, you know, saying, oh, it pick, it's picking up again. Some say I'm super busy. Others say like, oh, I'm struggling. So how do you feel that, you know, through Instagram, do you feel like there is a is it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, kind of push and, it's push and pull, I think. Um, I mean, I opened the store and I honestly opened it and um, found, like, I got so lucky with um, Lori, who runs it. I mean, I got so lucky with that because I did not open a store to run a store. Um, and I kind of had too, I had so much fun doing it when it first opened. It was like, I didn't really, I would have rather probably been here more, but I wouldn't get anything done. Um, and I mean, I, I think I told you this at the beginning of the call. It's like, for us, it's like, I kind of narrowed down my team in 2019. And then when all of this happened, it's, you just, you adapt. Um, my design business has, I mean, it's, it's always been busy, but it's just, you know, we kind of learned to work with, without an office and, you know, COVID, I think just, it was a game changer for everybody. But I think that's the benefit of being in a creative industry. You just have to be creative. Um, and just change it around. It's like, I can't get that. So what can I do instead? Yeah. I would love to, you know, to pivot a little and make this super tangible. And yeah, yeah I would love to start with you. So if, you know, I felt super inspired by this call now and decided to open an Instagram account right after, um, how would I start it? You know, like, what would you be the first three steps or your three pieces of advice, you know, for me, what I should be doing? Um, I would say that everyone should remember that Instagram is a social tool, so be social. Um, you're, you have your beautiful photo, you should express yourself in the profile, in your profile, tell them what you're, tell people what you're about, because people will immediately go to your profile to see, is she a designer or just likes to opine on all things design? Um, where's her office? What is she doing? So make sure all of that is filled out. And when you do your post, um, 
you know, start following other um, people who might be influential, like Amy and Jean, and try to make friends, and they may start following you. When you have Jean and Amy uh, following you back, um, that means something, because people like to follow the people that Jean and Amy follow. Um, also, commenting. Um, you know that a lot of people are on their Instagram account. So if you comment, there's a high likelihood that someone will see your comments and think, oh, that's interesting. I've seen this person many times. Let's check out her account. So um, you really want to be kind of social. Um, make sure you're kind of um, present and, you know, not just getting your friends and family to follow you, but to get other people in other areas to follow you. And that's where you get connection and more followers and and you'll have a lot more fun doing it instead of having it as a job you know um, you'll enjoy getting to know other designers other people in press um, uh, and other brands thank you super helpful I, you know even I took a couple of notes um, <laughs> what, 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 what do you add what would you add to that you know like I'm super excited of opening my own Instagram account now this afternoon like what would be your piece of advice well um, I think I would try to find determine what I wanted to do with it first because if it was an Instagram account where I was trying to help people understand what I did in my business um, and drive people towards me I would I would try, I would put on the very, very best pictures of what I work I had done and um, tag any vendors that you might have used on this because if they see it and they think it's a beautiful use of their product, they might repost your picture. And all of a sudden, a lot of people get to see something you've done that's beautiful that no one else would have ever seen. And, you know, it, I completely agree with the other girls that it is fun because you do get to know people on Instagram and you get to answer a lot of questions. And it's very, there's a lot of personal engagement that you could never have if you put an advertisement somewhere. Or even if you had a project of yours in a magazine. You would never know how anybody would ever respond to it um, unless they made a real effort to email you or something. But it's immediate um, response to things that you have creatively put out there. And it's very energizing, I would say. Yeah, Jean, super helpful. Uh, also, um, Amy, now you need to go last, you know, for that question, but I'm sure you have more tips to share. Oh, Lori behind me at the store is like, you need to post. I haven't posted for the store in a bit. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think there's an element of like, just kind of being like, just, it's your voice. And it's, there's an element of just, there's something different about an account that kind of like feels like a person and has some integrity, whether it's goofy or, you know, serious versus, you know, kind of something that feels kind of, disingenuine, I guess. Um, and I think, I don't know, I mean, for me, it's kind of an icebreaker, you know, it kind of, it kind of gets you from here to here, in terms of knowing somebody or starting a project, or it's a way to build a brand and kind of introduce, you know, what you like. Um, I mean, again, it's kind of the store for me was like a little bit of a playground in a sense it's like it's not for a client it's I'm just gonna pick what I like and maybe other people will like it too I don't know um I remember the first day we opened I was like oh people are here and I was so sad they bought something that was antique and my mom looked at me she's like isn't that the, isn't that why we did this I was like, oh yeah okay <laughs> um, but I think I think just like, don't no do don't buy it I know I'm like no it's the only one it's the first day um I think just have fun with it you kind of have to you know and I think if you're kind of if you're trying too hard and you're all of it, it that comes across you know i think um i mean i did the instagram for the store i'm not very good at um responding which is why lori is also in the instagram for the store so if you message us she's going to be the one that responds because she, she takes very good care of everybody um i don't know i love it it's been a really really interesting kind of way to connect with people but is there a choice to actually not have an instagram 
account these days? Like, would you say like, oh, listen, like if it's not genuine and if you don't really are not really into it, like, ah, just skip it. Or do you say, well, if you're not into it, then really force yourself or get somebody to do it for you because there's just no option. I don't know, Young, Jean, Amy, what are your opinions? I, I think you have to have an Instagram now. I, I think there's just too many clients, too many brands, too many press outlets that go to Instagram first. So if you're not like Amy, a natural storyteller, or you don't like to, I just recently saw that Jean bought a house. It's very exciting. You know, if you're not into that um, and sharing um, your life, then treat it like your website. Just post pictures of your work um, so that when people come, they can see your work. Um, but I think today it would be a big mistake not to have an Instagram even if it's just some pictures, website pictures, and it's static, and you don't post regularly, you, you should have something for people to go to. Jean, I see you nodding, so you agree to that? Yeah, I completely agree. I think um, that people use Instagram now as their search tool. That's true, I did look there first. Mm -hmm. So you think it's important that, you know, what Jan also said, that in your bio, you really have to describe, you know, where you are, what you do, what you stand for, that, you know, that you prep, maybe even, you know, use the hashtags of like, I don't know, New York designer or like, you know, or Houston designers. So things that you think other people will search for and you should pop up. Is that something you suggest? Uh, well, I have never used hashtags um, except our own project hashtags. Um, but so I can't really speak to that. I have, I have heard that people, I've seen people do that a ton, but I've never done that, so. Wow, so um, that's good to, that's, that's a really helpful tip also for me. You know, I can just like get rid of those. Um, maybe before we come <laughs> into the Q and A, you know, like last quick question. Um, Let's talk about like do's and don'ts. I always love this. So what are you one to do's and what are you one to don'ts? Jean, why don't you start? Okay. Um, I think do be consistent. And um, that could mean posting consistently, um, like time-wise. But I think it also means that your, your feed should look consistent. Like if someone opens on your profile page and can look through lots of your images, it should feel like it all belongs in the same place. So I think there needs to be a consistent way things are photographed, a consistent, um, just a consistent feel so it looks like you. Um, don't, a big don't for me is get personal but sometimes TMI, you know? So there's this balance of like, what do you bring in that's helpful and engaging and allows your personality to come out and then is just, oh, you know, too much. So, so I just- We all had this moment, you know. <laughs> um, super helpful, thank you. Um, Young, what's your do one do and like one big don't? Um, so definitely do share your voice, um, be authentic, um, really kind of show your your personality. Don't try to mimic someone else's because that's definitely gonna come through. Um, if you try to put on an act, let's say. Um, your Instagram is not going to read as authentic. So be yourself, um, number one. Number two, a don't, well, uh, the don't. Mm -hmm. I want to share this, and I'm not sure if it's a don't, but, um, you know, sometimes if I share something that is political, um, then I'll just lose a ton of followers. Um, and uh, that's sort of a choice for me, but I do want to sort of um, let you all know that whenever, if you post anything slightly political, um, doesn't matter which way, you're going to lose followers um, because they're coming to your account for design, 
not politics. Um, I recently was featured as like a Martha Stewart tastemaker, um, and I just saw the surge in um, followers. And then I decided to post about Kamala Harris, and then it all fell. <laughs> so that was a personal choice. I thought it might happen, and it did. So that's a do or a don't, depending on how you feel. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, you decide to show to to to, to you know to share your voice. Um, Amy, what is for you like the big do and the big don't? Oh, well, um, a do that I would say has been a good one for me, at least, is to get a good app. And there's a lot of really good photo editing apps. That, like, even if it's not professionally shot, um, I like Lightroom. It's what I use for editing photos. Um, and there's, I think it's called like light and airy. There's like a series of filters you can kind of buy and they're presets. But that helps kind of with what Jean was saying. Like, as you scroll, it, there's some consistency just yeah. in the way things are lit and the way what's the really name of the app funny. sorry what's the I, name of the i app? use lightroom it's an ex i think it's part of photoshop and it's an adobe um product there's so many though honestly there's so many good photo editing ones and i think sometimes you have to play with them a little to see which one you know you like the most and i like unfold for um stories because it puts like white around everything which is nice um I don't even know this would be my don't, but I haven't raised an opinion of, about anything political, but um, I, I am in the middle of a divorce and I did post about that. And honestly, I was kind of overwhelmed with like the support that kind of came out of nowhere. It's, it was really, um, I, I was so grateful for it. You know, it's like it, people that I didn't, I've never met that just, you know, were so encouraging and had something else similar to share or would chime in and be like, well, it all looks really pretty, you know, you, who would ever know? And so I think that, you know, there's kind of a, there's a way that with your Instagram page, you have these photos that are beautiful. And with your stories, it's like, this is real life behind the scenes and it's not filtered and it's not always beautiful. Um, and I think keeping that organized with what Jean was saying, you know, having with highlights, you can kind of tell a story and people can get to know you. And I think if you're real, people appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so I'm looking at the time and 42 minutes already passed. So I think it's time to switch to our Q&A session. Um, everybody who has joined a little later, you know, you have, if you hover with your mouse um, um, at the bottom, you see a Q&A button and you can enter a question. Um, and we started at the beginning, you know, who would win the exotic prize. So it's actually um, Nicolette from the Bahamas, I think. Uh, so that's the first that's the first comment in the Q and A. So I just thought I I, I should mention that. Um, but Emily asks, you know, newly in business on my own, despite 15 years of experience with design firms, I do not own pictures of my past work, and so I don't have anything to post. How do you suggest I handle Instagram to make the most out of it and build my brand? And I don't know, Jean, whether you have whether you can answer that. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, Emily, I think you need to do something in your own home that you're very proud of, take pictures of it, and or get a professional to take pictures of it and post from your own home because it's very personal that way and um, it gets you started. And I think also, you know, just connecting the dots to that, you know, I think what Amy said before, it can be rearranging a chest or it can be, you know, um, rearranging a shelf or something like that. And then if the light is a little off, you know, you just put this to one of those apps and you lighten it up and right. um, it, should, it should look really good. No, I mean, yes, I think- Yes, it must look good. <laughs> your lines need to be straight. Would you- think, Using yeah. your own house is a great idea. I mean, it's what I did. Yeah. Is it okay, Young, is it okay to post pictures of others' designers' work if giving proper credit? I think it's a twofold question, right? Number one is like, can you do that? And number two is, would you do that? So I think there was a period where a lot of people are doing that and I would post friends' works and, and uh, certainly it's great to give, you know, your friends a shout out if they've just been recently published and that's always great, you, you know, it helps images go viral. But I think if your purpose is really to showcase your brand, 
and your voice and your work, it's best to stick with your own images. Um, and if I only, I'm just like, you know, if I only get three, four pictures, you know, out of my own house and the week, the first week is over and I run out of pictures, I think that's a really realistic case, you know, like, what do I do? Do I like? I think, you know, you could do, oh, sorry, Amy. Um, uh, I think, you know, take pictures of things while you're shopping, while you're sourcing, things that you're looking at, seeing. Uh, we do mood boards that uh, do really well on Instagram. Um, uh, when you're taking a walk, uh, beautiful, uh, you know, depending on if you do outdoors in your Instagram or um, a pretty table setting. Um, there's so many things you could do to be creative um, and show your taste in your eye. Thank you. Amy, you wanted to, to add something to that too, right? Same mood board. But that, you can do that. It's like to take the pictures that inspire you and kind of layer them all in with other things that inspire you and then it's yours. You know, and I think that's part of it anyway. It's like you're just mixing it all in and whether it's fabrics. I used to do that at, at the beginning, I think a lot. Because um, it would it'd be like a little vignette and then the fabrics that I was so excited to propose. And, you know, you start small and you just build on it. But it's also interesting because you can connect that now with what Jean um, suggested earlier, you know, if you do a scheme, and I see that with Schumacher a lot, you know, that people do a scheme with a lot of Schumacher and then tag us, you know, and then in a lot of cases, our local, you know, um, uh, showroom accounts, you know, like um, uh, repost this and so on and with that. So I think there's also a nice connection between, you know, tagging vendors. Um, so Virginia asks, you know, do you get sign off slash permission from clients before you start a project? Do you get pushback on that? Some clients don't want their homes to be in the public realm, even if their names are not attached to photos. And I also have to really quickly um, uh, uh, add that she lives in Vancouver, so also very exotic, you know. Um, <laughs> very exotic. Um, what is your, how do you do that, Jean? I don't know, do you want to start again? Well, I, um, we have had, you know, a couple of clients who have said, we don't want our work, we don't want our house out there at all, even if you never say who we are. And so those projects never see the light of day. But most people are so thrilled to see their stuff out there. It, it's, um, it's a boost, you know, it's, and I never give anybody's names just to protect their privacy, but um, I think it's part of it. Interesting. Um, do you guys have that in your contracts? Um, we, yeah, Amy, you go first this time. <laughs> um, I, yeah, mine's in my contract, but I kind of always like preface it with, you know, but at the end of the day, it's your house. It's not my house. Um, I, for me, it's like for it to, for the picture to end up anywhere is always super exciting, but there's something that's really kind of awesome and kind of the best part of a project when you come back in to photograph it, because that to me is kind of like when it all comes together. And I think that there's something, I have found that the clients always, the, even the ones that are like, oh, it's two days of you being here. I'm like, yep, can't wait. Um, but there's something really fun about like kind of having the camera to it and rearranging. And then they usually always get excited, you know, to see how pretty it is on the screen. And um, there's something about that, I think, that is really, really, um, I love that part. It's kind of the best. Cool. Young. We actually have get a lot of pushback from clients. We've had, you know, we end up send it, signing a lot of confidentiality agreements. Um, and even though it's in our contract, if they don't give us permission to post, then we don't post. Um, and I would say about a third of our clients request no images. Um, so it really depends. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I have 26 pending questions. So what we do now is that I really just ask one and then I maybe I, I pick one of you guys and, you know, put you on the spot. Um, but that's also fun. So um, um, the next question is, you know, many designers have amazing photos on Instagram, but aren't as successful on social media in terms of followers and so on and so on. What sets you apart? You know, how do 
you get people to see your photos? I think, Jean, you had a couple of, you know, pieces of advice at the beginning. Would you repeat them or add something to that? Yes, well, I really do think the story feature is really getting important too. Um, so people can get a behind the scenes um, look at your business and your process and site visits and it generates some interest and energy. Um, so if it's, it's more than just these pictures, it's, it's dynamic if you add stories. So I would really recommend adding, you know, getting regular at doing stories as well. Doesn't have to be much, you know, like three frames maybe. Okay, that's helpful. Um, I'm just looking at the next, oh yeah. So Amy, a question for you. I noticed that none of you use hashtags on your post. Are there any benefits or any negatives on using hashtags? I'll be honest, the only reason that I don't really have hashtags is because usually they're kids climbing on me and I don't have time to think of something that's clever. Um, if <laughs> truly. Okay, shall I ask someone else? <laughs> ask somebody else because I don't, I don't use them and that's the only reason why. It's not, it's more just like, like I can't yeah, think of but, it. Yeah, but it shows it's, but it shows you can be successful with this. Young, why don't yeah. you do, why don't you do hashtags? Yeah, I use hashtags because I found um, there have been times where like images of our work have really gone viral and um, nobody knew who the work was by. So um, I started to try my best. To, um, I forget a lot of times too. Um, but it's good to hashtag your, um, your firm name and the different permutations. I do Young Ha, Young Ha Interiors, Young Ha Interior Design, because people do other things so that when you see the image, it'll be attributed to us. Um, so that's probably the most important thing. Um, it's also a great search function. So let's say you want real estate developers to find you, then hashtag luxury real estate, hashtag real estate. Um, then those people following those hashtags, your work may come up in their feed. So that's think, where hashtags are helpful. And I think you're making a really good point also with real estate agents, because, um, you know, especially if you're new in Instagram, if you're new in your own local community, you know, somehow, you know, putting your finger feelers out also to real estate agents, you know, can be a very beneficial way of connecting and, and attracting business. At least that's what I, I heard from a couple of interior designers. Um, hashtag, can I say this about hashtags? I will say I'm always so grateful if someone's like, what's this picture? And it's mine and I don't see it. If, if someone tags me, I'm always so. And so if you're starting out and you see something that's like untagged or unmentioned and you know what it is, say something. Yeah, I think that's a really good advice too. Um, is any one of you using it Pinterest and if, how do you think it compares to Instagram in value? Anyone I used to, I don't have that anymore. Okay, so, so I think Just that's an answer, I guess, no? Yeah. I think that's an answer that you're not using it anymore. We, not we've recently tried to make an effort to um, put all of our work on Pinterest in, in specific categories too. Um, and I think that's driving traffic to us. Okay. Um, so Melissa asks, it's a long question. Um, uh, she struggles with social media because she doesn't have time. Is there an app or anything that will allow her to post one time to all social media sites uh, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? She's a small business owner and doesn't have anyone in charge for her social media. Um, she's really struggling about that, like what is any advice you would give? So I find it very interesting because you all do it yourself. I think that's for me a big takeaway that you do carve time out of the day and probably even like do it when you get up in bed or when you go to bed or, you know, like it's not like part of your, I would assume, you know, part of your professional day. Like how do you, how do you manage that? You know, um, how can you help Melissa with a piece of advice? I'll chime in because I know what that's like. Um, I mean, there's a lot of times I post like when, when my kids go to sleep and it's late at night and it's just the only time I can post. Um, I know you can connect your Instagram and your Facebook and your Twitter and 
I'm Instagram is kind of my go-to. So, I mean, you just toggle all those things when you go to post. Um, I know there's a way that you can schedule posts. I don't know how to do it, um, but but I know it exists. You can basically it's an app. Plan out, right. You can plan out a week of posts and like on Sunday night have it ready for the week and it just goes right, Jane. I mean, yeah. You know how to do that? Yeah. I might have to do some yeah, hold on now we can't hear let's give Jean a second to figure out um, the airpods um young do you do that also with an app or do you just do it whenever you no, feel no i um i don't know how to use those apps <laughs> like amy said so <laughs> I, just know the, I know they exist I just, I just learned hashtag New York designer. I'm going to use that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm definitely doing things off the cuff. Um, I do it first thing in the morning as I'm having my cup of coffee, whenever that is, um, I try to do my post. That's usually my go-to. Um, I've also heard that posting um, either in the morning or in the evening, one of those two times is really good. Um, because that's when people are checking their Instagram. Usually people check in the morning when they're waking up. So that's a really good time. And I think what, what you can do is try to build in a routine. Um, you know, obviously I don't do it all the time, but um, it's good to have a routine and that way um, it becomes a habit and therefore more enjoyable for you. It gets easier if you get into the routine of it. You, it does get easier. It and doesn't take long once you. No, you do it. it doesn't. And I also think it's a way of you know how you see the world, right? Like what you can post. So you could, for example, also take a screenshot of your screen right now, post you know the panelists of this webinar. You tag Schumacher. You tag the four panelists. You know, and like you put it on your story on your feed or something like that. And with that, you already have something that is like a behind the scenes. You know, I'm. I think I'm taking that very much away from you guys too, you know, that it's the way how you look at the world also, you know, yeah. how do well, you let If you have an album on your, like in your, on your phone, if you have an album of things that like, eventually you want to post them, you know, so that that way you're not digging through photos to find something. Um, Cause every once in a while I'll have a spurt where I've, you know, posted a lot and I'm like, all right, everyone's probably sick of me. Um, and so I don't post the like fifth picture or whatever it is, but if you have an album that you kind of just, it all goes into one place, that's kind of an easy way to get back to it. Yeah. Um, how about posting on your vacations during these times? Is that appropriate? Maria asks. Going on vacation. <laughs> Tell me how that works. <laughs> So I guess like you feel like, you know, showing that you're like going on vacation is not the right time. I think it depends. I, I mean, I, it just, I don't know. It depends. I don't think there's a rule for that. Um, I remember one day um, someone, I think it was my, um, someone's birthday, um, a friend of ours sent us some caviar and, and it was so beautiful. The display was so beautiful. It was really nice. And we were just like, you know what? It's COVID. It would be so gross for me to post this on stories. So I think you do have to take the temperature of what's happening in the world. Your Instagram is supposed to be public. Um, just remember the guy who was posting selfies on the beach in Hawaii got arrested. So be mindful of what you post. Um, if it's very design centric, um, and it's beautiful, then yeah, maybe um, you do post that. I mean, people are getting out. It's not like you have to, not that we're all on lockdown exactly anymore. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's, uh, that's very good advice. Um, we have one minute left and I read a question several times now. So I just wanted to repeat that. And it's, you know, what is your take on Insta accounts that start to build their brands with other designers images? How authentic or not does that feel? I know we touched on that, but I've read that so many more times. Um, Jean, Amy, give us a quick, you know, one sentence answer. How do you feel about that? Not super authentic. I, I don't have an opinion. Okay. So it's probably, again, just like how you relate to it in the caption, I would assume, no? Yeah, I would say it's, it's, um, 
be be wise about that because um, if you're touting your own skills and you're showing someone else's photograph, it's a little feels a little funny. Yep. I okay. There's a lot of really really beautiful accounts that are just inspirational. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's just me. Just All right. Today. All right. Okay. I think, you know, I mean, uh, I think I have to watch this after uh, again in YouTube. Um, uh, there was so much information in it. Thank you so, so much, um, Yang, Jean and Amy. It was a real, real honor and pleasure to have you, um, you know, share all of your secrets and experiences. Um, and um, yeah, I'm sure that everyone who watched uh, is super thankful. Um, you guys have a great day and everybody who watched us, thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for watching the first time. You know, you can find all the webinars on YouTube and Schumacher, you know, provides every day at four o'clock uh, Eastern time, something to tune in. So um, it get, never gets boring. Thank you very much, everyone. And um, I hope I see you soon in, in real again. Yes. <laughs> bye, Thank everyone. You. So, bye. Thank you.